Hey, hello guys. This is Karthik from ExecuteAutomation.com and this is part 4 of our Selenium Automation with C Sharp. And in this part, we're going to discuss about NUnit in Visual Studio. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 3 since this part is going to be a continuation of that part. So NUnit is a unit testing framework for all .NET languages, initially ported from JUnit. So if you have already good knowledge in JUnit, so this is going to be a cakewalk for you. It is written entirely in C Sharp and has been completely redesigned to take advantage of many .NET language features, for example, custom attributes and other reflection related capabilities. So NUnit is nothing but a framework. As you know, in Selenium C Sharp, we worked with the J units on and test NG to perform the unit testing operation or running the multiple tests to perform some operation. Similarly, in Visual Studio C Sharp, we have something called as the NUnit MS test but we are going to use n unit in our case. So for that, let me first flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same project which we worked in last project as well. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add the reference for our n unit in our project. For doing that, first you need to first install the n unit into your Visual Studio. For doing that, just go to extensions and updates and there is something called the n unit test adapter. Just for install this into your Visual Studio first, right? And then you need to add a reference to your N unit. So for that, I'm going to manage NuGet packages and then search for N unit. All right, so as you can see here, we have a N unit here. So I'm going to click this install. So this will add a reference to my project. Great. And I'm not going to install this NUnit unit test runner because in Visual Studio itself we have something called Test Explorer which will run the test for us. And I'm not going to install this adapter as well. So I'm going to close this. Right. And then what we can do is let's do this. Let's first split this whole code which is written in this main method to some separate chunks of methods like public void initialize. Great. So this is going to be my initialize method which will open the browser for me. And then I'm going to write one more method which will execute this operation for me, right? Let's say execute test. All right. And then once it is done, I'm going to close this browser. So let me call this cleanup. So this will close my drivers instance. Great. So for that, first we need to create this iWeb driver as the global variable. So I'm going to write it right here. Great. And then we're going to navigate to this browser every time we perform a test. So I'm going to put it right here. And then we're going to perform some operations. That's what I said. So I'm going to put it right here. And once the test is done, I'm going to close the driver. So I'm going to put it in the cleanup. Great. But that's fine. I mean, let's clean this whole test. Right. So this is fine for now. But how does this test explorer will know that I'm, I need to run this execute test method? Right. So now if you go to this test explorer and now if you build your solution, you see nothing here because there is no test. So what else to do? The thing is you need to add a attribute called test. And this attribute will come using this in unit dot framework reference. So just add this, right? Now if you go to the test explorer and now if you build a solution, you can see there is something called as execute test. So this brings me up this execute test method. Great. And now if I run this selected test, the test will fail. It has opened the browser, but still the test will fail because we have not called this initialize method anywhere. So we need to somehow tell the NUnit framework that I need to call this guy first and then perform the operation. So once this test is done, I need to close this driver by calling this method, right? For doing that, there are two more attributes called setup and then there is one more attribute called teardown. Right? 
So setup attribute, as you can see here, setup attribute is used in a text fixture to identify a method that is called immediately before each test is run, right? So this will be called for every test you're executing. So I'm going to save this guy. And then now if I build a solution, let me close this browser as well. Great. And now if I do a run selector test, now it should open me up the browser and also navigate to the Google page so that we can perform the rest of the test operation which we have specified in the code. So now you can see that it is going to the Google page and it performed our intended operation execute automation and then close test and you can see the test got passed. Right. So there is no output link here because we have not typed any value there. But if let's say you can type some values for your console, let's say in opened URL, right? And similarly, console.writeline, executor test, similarly, console.writeline, close to the browser. Great. And now if you run the selector test, Great. And now we can see there's an output link available here. So if you click this, you can see that it will give you a standard output for all the operations you have performed and you type in the console, like open the URL, execute the test and close the browser. So all the operations are being outputted into your console. Right. So this is coming from the NUnit framework for us. So that's it, guys. So this is how you can perform a execution operation using NUnit. And if you want to do some other test to be executed, then just create one more method here, like public void next test. And then I decorate this method with the test attribute. And also write a console.write line and type next method. Right? So now if you execute this test, you can see both the tests will be appearing here, right? So you can execute both of them one by one, right? So that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.